This lecture is a really important one, this and the next one especially, uh, for solving puzzles using ideas from group theory. I want you to spend a few minutes looking at um, puzzle number 14. Uh, the way puzzle number 14 works, we have um, these six triangles with the six numbers in them. And when I mix up the puzzle, uh, what I can do is there's, there's six different moves I can make. By pushing these red circles here, I could either rotate these three guys around, or I can rotate the, what's in t these, uh, the two, five, and four around, or I could rotate uh, the one, three, and four around. I can also push this purple button, and that will allow me, now those three buttons will make these things go counterclockwise. So the clockwise and the counterclockwise are inverses of each other. You don't really need the counterclockwise because if I make a wrong move and I want to go backwards, I could just do the same move twice. We can call those moves um, A, B, and C, just to call them something. Uh, you can mess around with that puzzle if you want for a while. And if you want to get to sort of the heart of that puzzle, you could do puzzle number 13, where it's almost done except the five, the six, and the four are in the incorrect spots. So I would say you want to spend a while messing around with that puzzle just uh, to see what you can make of it. But we are going to learn a really powerful technique for solving a question, uh, solving this, this puzzle and puzzles like it. Another puzzle that you should spend some time with, or if you can spend some time with it, it will help you understand the ideas that are going to happen in this lecture better. <clears throat> Puzzle number seven. Uh, the way puzzle number seven works is that there are nine and just nine legal moves. If I um, if I push here in the first position, it makes an L-shaped thing, and you see what it does. It puts the thing in the first position into the second position, and the thing in the second position goes into the fifth position, and the thing in the fifth position goes into the first position. So this is one of the moves, this is one of the moves, this is one of the moves, that's three. I can't push on the number two because it's not able to make one of those L-shaped things. So move four, move five, move six, move seven, move eight, move nine. I would call these moves though, one, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, ten, and eleven. You can see the 16 in the bottom right-hand corner. That's not going to be uh, moving because there's no way to, to get at that number. But this is actually a pretty challenging puzzle, especially when you get to the end. We are going to learn how to master this puzzle in this lecture also. But both of those puzzles, number 13 or the or number four, uh, number 14 and 13, uh, using the, the triangle puzzle, or this puzzle number 7 with the L-shaped move, they're pretty frustrating, this one especially, but by the end of this lecture, you will have a technique for solving both of those, and it's going to involve something um, in group theory that's known as uh, conjugation. The way conjugation works is if you have some kind of permutation, like just uh, like 2, 5, 7, and the inverse of it, is 275. And if you compose it with this inverse, well, if it's really its inverse, it should end up sort of not doing anything. This does something to it, this undoes it. Well, look what would happen if I take the 257 and instead of composing it with its own uh, permutation in between, I put in something like 1, 5 another thing. And then I do the inverse of the first thing. So we say this is alpha, this thing's different, it's beta, and this thing's alpha inverse. When you do these three things, you end up with 1, 2. So it doesn't quite undo it back to the identity, but when you do a sequence of three moves where the first one and the last one are inverses of each other, and then you have this other move in the middle, it creates a new move 
that in this case has the same sort of complexity as as that middle move. Let me show you another one. What if instead I make I do, I do uh, beta, which is one five, and then I do alpha, two five seven, and then I do beta inverse. It's still one five because the inverse of a two cycle is still a two cycle. That one turns into two one seven. So when you have anything of this form where you have sort of three things being composed and the third one is the inverse of the first one, that's called a, a, a conjugation. And um, I'm going to show you in some actual puzzles how you use this. It's actually a lot more intuitive of an idea when you see it applied to an actual puzzle. A good puzzle to illustrate this idea of conjugation is puzzle number six. So in puzzle number six, what we have here is only three numbers are out of place. Now, uh, the three numbers that are out of place are um, the 10 is in position four. So, so the thing in position four wants to be in position 10. And when you look at position 10, there's a nine there. So the thing in position 10 wants to go to position 9. And the thing in position 9 is a 4, and it wants to go to, to position 4. So our goal is to create the 3 cycle 4, 10, and 9. But unlike the other puzzles, or some of the other ones, where you can click on the numbers, here we have these 7 orange buttons on the top. And um, button number D is real important because when you push button number D, it's going to do an 11, uh, 12, 15 cycle like this. The reason that's important is that it's our goal to do a three cycle. And this, this is a three cycle, so it seems like that's going to be useful. The problem is, it's the wrong three cycle. I recommend you push pause and mess around with this puzzle. Maybe I should show you the other three legal moves or the other six. One of them switches number four with number 15, and this is its inverse, which is actually the same because it's a two cycle. This one switches position nine with position 12, and this is the inverse. And this one positions 10 with 12, and this is the inverse. I, I recommend you pause and mess around with that riddle for a bit. The goal again is to do a 4, 10, 9 cycle. Okay, welcome back. Maybe you realized since the thing I can do that switches three things, but it switches the wrong three things, it switches 11, 12, and 15. I want to switch 4, 10, and 9, but these other buttons are really convenient because this button puts the 4 into position 15. And this one puts the 9 into position 12, and this puts the 10 into position 11. So now the three things that I'm interested in, the 4, 9, and the 10, are in like the perfect spot to get them to switch positions properly without messing up the other things. So I want to get the 4 into position 10, so by pushing on this 9 here, it puts the 4 Whoops, can't push on the 9, but I can push on this button here. So by pushing on this button, it does that 3 cycle. And in doing so, the thing in position 4 went where the 10 was, and the thing in position 10 went where the 9 was, and the thing in position 9 went to where the 4 was. Well, it seems like this whole puzzle is all messed up now. Things are all over the place. But now if I send those numbers back to where they came from, I, now that I've done this, I do um, the 10, 11, which is going to put the 10 back to where it wants to be. And then the 9, 12 puts the 9 to where it wants to be. And the 4, 15. And now that puzzle is, um, is solved. This is a really important one. I'd recommend you kind of look at it again. And you see
I want to say a little bit more <clears throat> about this puzzle. Imagine I, imagine I just did move A, B, and C, and it gets the 9, 4, and the 10 into the, the spots where they, where they want to be. And imagine if I just, just undid it so that the 9 went back to where he was, and the 4 went back to where he was, and the 10 went back to where he was. Well, that wouldn't really have accomplished very much. But I put the 9, 4, and 10 into these three spots, then when I do this move, and now when I do this 10, 11, it's not the 9 that moves back to where it came from, but it's the 10 that moves back to where the 9 came from. And when I do this one, it's not the 4 that goes back to where he came from, but it's the 9 that goes back to where the 4 came from. And finally, when I do this move here, it's not the 10 that goes back to where he came from, but it's the 4 that goes back to where the 10 came from. Puzzle 5 is the one where you have to swap something with something in position 1. And here, if you look at this puzzle, it's just the 11 and the 4 that need to be swapped. And you, you can create these by pushing custom if you want to sort of follow along. So it takes two moves. And the, the basic idea is we, we want to swap the 4 with the 11, but we can only swap things if one of them is in position 1. So I force it to happen as a setup move I put either one, I'll just put, I'll put the four into position one. And now I'm in a position to swap the four and the 11, which I do. But the thing was uh, that I, I wasn't, uh, the, the, I need to move that 11 back to where it came from. So that's where I do the inverse of the setup move and I get the answer. So this is a nice example of a, um, of a conjugation. We had our setup move, putting the thing that's in position 11 into position 1. Then I had my move that actually did accomplish the task, which was swapping the 11 and the 4, but now the 11 was in position 1. But now I had to move, I had to move uh, the 11 back to, to the spot where the 4 originally was. I want to show you how you can apply this conjugation idea to uh, puzzle number 5. This is the one <clears throat> where you can swap any two uh, numbers as long as one of them is in position 1. So I have this position here you see on the right and I'm going to first turn this permutation into product of cycles. And we, we've done this one before. Number one is in position six. Sorry, number one is in position four, and four is in position 11, and 11 is in position six, and six is in position one. Then there's a big cycle. Two is in position 14, is in position five, is in position seven, is in position 12, is in position nine. And the last cycle, 3, 16, 10. Now, I can I can write the inverse of this, which would be a permutation that would, if I could do it in one shot, would, would solve it. Um, I'm going to take each of the cycles and write them backwards. But instead of writing 10, 16, 3, I'm going to write the 3. Then I'm going to go to the last number and work my way. It's kind of like going to the left. So here is all the cycles. Whoops, 3, 10, 16. The second one, I'm going to start with the 2, but then I'm going to work to the left. So 2, 9, 12, 7, 5, 14. Then the last cycle, I'm going to start with the 1 and write 6, 11, Four. 
Now, this last cycle is a, is a good one because I can kind of factor it into 1, 6, 1, 11, 1, 4. And that's useful because every move that I make needs to have position 1 in it because that's, that's the way this game works. But the problem is, like this 3, 10, 16, that's, I could break it up into 3, 10, 3, 16, which is fine, except 3, 10 and 3, 16 are not legal moves. Each move has to have a 1 in it. So I'm going to show you how conjugation can be used. Basically, I can take the 3, 10, 16 and write it as 1, 3, and then 1, 10, 16, and then I'm going to write it as 3, 1 to just give the idea of how this conjugation works. So basically, if I switch the thing, the 3, into position 1, and then I do this 1, 10, 16 cycle, and then I put the thing that's in uh, position 3 back into position 1, it's going to end up fixing it. It's going to end up doing the 3, 10, 16 cycle. You can sort of test that out. And I can also take this 2, 9, this big cycle, I'm going to write it here. There's not enough room for it, but I'm going to write it as 1, 2. Then I can do 1, 9, 1, 12, 1, 7, 1, 5, 1, 14, and then a 2, 1, which is really the same thing as a 1, 2, and same thing here. So what I've done is I've created this conjugation. This is like alpha, this big thing, is the beta, and this is the alpha inverse. So I move the thing in position 2 into position 1, then I do this this big cycle, this, and basically what I'm doing is 1, 2, 1, 9, 12, 7, 5, 14, 1, 2, is the same thing as 2, 9, 12, 7, 5, 14. Because if I want to do this, by putting the thing in position 2 into position 1, then when I do this big cycle, everything gets cycled around properly, except that the 2 is in position 1 now, so at the end I have to move it back to where it, to where it came from. That's the idea, and I'm actually going to take these ends up being 14 moves. Here's, um, oops, I realize I didn't take this 1, 10, 16 and factor it up. So I'm going to write 1, 3, 1, 10, 16 is 1, 10, 1, 16. And then I need this 1, 3 at the end. So this has gotten pretty ugly. I think I'm going to erase this. and write the whole thing out neater. Okay. So the 3, 10, 16 turned into 1, 3, 1, 10, 16, 1, 3, which turned to 1, 3. The 1, 10, 16 is 1, 10, 1, 16, and this 1, 3. This entire sequence is just a way of doing 3, 10, 16, but with swaps and having to use 1 as, as one of them. Now this big 2, 9, 12, 7, 5, 14, that becomes 1, 2. And then the 1, 9, 12, 7, 15 becomes 1, 9, 1, 12, 1, 7, 1, 5, 1, 14. Then I have to do 1, 2 again at the end. That's the undoing the setup. And then finally, well, good news, the 1, 6, 11, 14, that's already got a 1 in the beginning, so I could write 1, 6, 1, 11, 1, 4. So we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 moves, and we'll see if those do actually so solve let's this see what puzzle. So when I do these 14 moves, 1, 3, 1, 10, 
116, 1, 3. Now we've got 1, 2, 1, 9, 1, 12, 1, 7, 1, 5, 1, 14, 1, 2, 1, 6, 1, 11, and 1, 4. And as you can see, it worked. Now let's look at puzzle 13. And this is an important one for these puzzles, so take a look here. Now notice that the thing, everything's fixed except the last three numbers. Uh, the thing that's in position, the thing uh, that's in uh, position 6, that is the 4, it wants to go uh, to position 4. The thing that's in position 4, which is the 5, wants to go to position 5. And the thing in position 5, which is 6, wants to go where? To position 6. Basically, the 4 wants to go where the 5 is. The 5 wants to go where the 6 is. And the 6 wants to go where the 4 is. So we want to do some kind of 3 cycle. Now, the trick is that, see, we have things that do 3 cycles. So if the 5, the 6, and the 4 were in the same kind of wheel like that, then one move would kind of do that rotation. So again, we want the 4 wants to go where the 5 is. So what the trick is, is I'm going to do move B, and then I'm going to do move C. And you see what that's accomplished is it's put the 4, 5, and 6 into the, into the same wheel. Now the 4 wants to go where the 5 is, and the 5 wants to go where the 6 is, and the 6 wants to go where the 4 is. So that can be accomplished by doing this counterclockwise move. So now at least the way the puzzle is now, the 4 is going where the 5 is, and, and so on. So now we have to undo it by doing the inverse of the setup moves. So I'm going to do C inverse and B inverse. And now that puzzle is complete. The last one I want to look at is a very difficult puzzle. It's the one where I could do these nine moves making these L-shaped things. And maybe, you know, you mess around with this, this puzzle a bit, you get a feel for how to get the one to, to get to its spot and maybe the two to this spot and how I can move the three over that way and get the three up there. It is a pretty tricky puzzle, actually. So to get the four into his right position, what I want to do, see right now, if I, if I push this button here, see how the six is sort of next to the three like that? So the four really wants to go where the, where the six is. And if I push the six twice, now the four will be in that place. And then I can swing that guy around. I'm not using this conjugation trick until the end, you'll see, but might as well go through this puzzle. Five, get the six up there, swing him around. This seven needs to kind of be moved over before he can be moved up. And here's the eight coming around. Right now the eight's kind of tucked away. I just want to see, see how this 11 is next to the seven? So if I can get the 8 into the position where the 11 is. This, this is kind of like uh, related to conjugation. Then I can get the 8 there. And here's the 9. So it runs into a little bit of trouble here. I'm going to get the 10 sort of separated from the 9. 
that will enable him to go in there. Uh, well, that 12 is kind of in no man's land. So let me kind of bring him at least where he wants to be. Now I can get the 9 and 10 to their spot, but then the 11 is going to mess them up. So I'm going to bring the 11 around. And now, so as you can see, I have the whole puzzle done except for the 13, 14, and 15 are not correct. If you look at this carefully, you can see that the 13 wants to be where the 14 is, and the 14 wants to be where the 15 is. But the only moves I have at my disposal are ones that rotate three things, which is good because I want to rotate three things, but not those bottom things. So if I can get the 13, 14, and 15 onto one of these L-shaped things, then I can do, do the move. So how can I, how can I do that? Well, um, if I push the 9, if, or if I do the move that's sort of called move 9, I get the 15 and 14 onto, wait, So my strategy is to do whatever it takes to get the 13, 14, and 15 onto the same kind of wheel. And I can do that by push on the 10. And now the 14 and 15 are at least in the same kind of wheel, the one with the 9 in it. So if I push the 9, now the 14 and 15 are together like that. Now I just got to get the 13 into the mix. So I push the thing in position 11. Then if I push the thing in position 10 twice, notice I now have the 13, 14, and 15 in the same L-shaped thing. Now, we want to put the 13 where the 14 is and the 14 where the 15 is. Um, if I push the thing that's in position 9, it's going to... Uh, really, I want to rotate these counterclockwise, but my only move moves them clockwise. So I'm going to have to now do the key move here, which is to do this twice. That puts the 13 where the 14 was and the 14 where the 15 was. Now I just have to undo what I just did. I have to do it backwards. So I did a, I did 10 twice, with, and the inverse of uh, 10 twice is the inverse of doing 10 once. So I'm going to do 10 once. Then I did, um, go going backwards. That is, I do the inverse of 11, which is 11 twice. Then I have to do the inverse of 9 which is 9 twice. And finally, I have to do the inverse of 10, which is 10 twice. And now that puzzle has been solved by using uh, conjugation. I want to show you how this concept of uh, conjugation works in the uh, 15 puzzle. So I'm going to do the 15 puzzle a little bit of a different way, at least at the end. Uh, than I did it uh, before. I'm just going to keep making the space for the number to go up into. Got to get the 4 over. That's part's a little complicated. One way I can do it is like this. Bring the 2 and 3 over. The 4 goes up and allows him to come back. Anyway, this isn't going to change from the way I did it last time until the end. Okay, so now, instead of getting the 9, 10, 13, I'm going to actually get that second to last row, get the 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, well, it was just done, but it didn't have to be. There are two other things that can happen. So I'm going to go custom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Another possibility is that it's like... Um, it's like this. Okay, so this could happen where 
the 13 wants to go where the 15 is and the four and the 14 wants to go where the 13 is and uh, the 13 wants to go where the 15 is the 15 wants to go where the 14 is and the 14 wants to go where the 13 is now the movement that I can make in this puzzle is I can do a three cycle on any three things that are kind of adjacent to each other. So I wish the 15, 13, and 14 were sort of together in like an L-shaped thing. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do a rotation to put the 13 where the 15 is. So watch this. I'm going to swing around the blank. And now the 13, 14, and 15 are in their own L. Now I have to make a decision whether to go clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, remember, the 13 wanted to go where the 15 is, and the 15 wanted to go where the 14 is. So I can do that in this L shape. The 13 is now where the 15 was. Okay. And I've done it. Now I just have to undo the setup moves, you know, what I did to get the 13 and 14 and 15 into that L shape thing. So I'm just going to bring these all around backwards. And that's the way you can do it using conjugations. There was the there was the setup move of getting the three things into an L. There was the move itself. I'm doing it backwards now. And then there was the undoing the setup move. So uh, it's a really powerful thing, this conjugation. I'm going to finish this lecture by showing you how the conjugation idea can be applied to the Rubik's Cube. So earlier on in a video we saw that um, because every move, every sequence of moves will eventually get back to its starting position and we just, I just showed you that if you happen to do the move pattern uh, where I do the green face twice clockwise and the red face twice clockwise, if I did that six times it would get back to the original position but if I do it just three times What that does is it swaps this cube with this one down here and this cube with this one down here. So that's useful if, if I need to be able to swap exactly these two cubes and exactly these two cubes. But what if I find myself in a situation where I want to swap not these two cubes and these two cubes, but instead I want to swap this one with this one down here, and you see the way this one is? It's those two cubes that want to get swapped. So it's a little different. I want to swap this cube with this one, and this one with this one, which is not exactly my pattern. I have a pattern for swapping this with this, and this with this. So we do our setup move. And that puts the two guys that want to get swapped in these positions where I have my move for. So that's like the alpha move. Now I do green, green, red clockwise, red clockwise, green, green, red clockwise, red clockwise. Do three times. And here's the third time. So that's the B move. And now I have to undo my, I have to do my A inverse move, which is that. So if I have a pattern that does something, I can do a conjugation by doing sort of a setup, puts the pieces that want to get moved into the positions of the positions that will get moved by the middle thing, and then I undo it.